Hi, my name is David Lewis. I'm the CEO of Inziv, and we are developing uh, an array of tools that we use to inspect high resolution displays, specifically micro LED, QLED, and OLED displays. Uh, and we're really excited to be talking to Charbox. And uh, here I'm going to put uh, one of your videos on. It's from your YouTube channel. Uh, can you explain a little bit uh, what's going on? Yeah, so what we're showing here is uh, one of our original systems over here. Uh, we are, this is in a system which is designed specifically for micro LED inspection. Micro LED, uh, micro LED has a few stages before it actually becomes a display. In the mid, mid range stage, um, you'll have a wafer and this wafer will be, will have maybe somewhere between uh, 4 million to 10 million chips. And each one of these chips uh, is going to become part of a pixel for a micro LED. Uh, uh, these, each each uh, pixel has three chips, blue, red, and green, um, which gives you color, though a lot of the devices being made today are still monochromatic in micro LED. Um, and so our challenge and the industry's challenge and where we're coming to help them is we are taking this wafer and we look at this wafer over um, its entirety and we're trying to identify where are which which ones uh, single ones of these millions of chips are defective and so we do this in a couple of ways uh, like we're showing over here we do a thing called photoluminescence where we excite with a laser and we see what the uh, spectral spectrum is um, there's another way to excite called EL or electroluminescence, where you see these two probes are electrically exciting the device and lighting it up. Um, and this is a more accurate way of testing a device, but it's slower than photoluminescence. So these are one of the balances we play with. And one of our developments that we're working on now is to uh, do this in a very fast uh, parallel way. In addition, um, we make the smallest point of light in the world, uh, nano, optical, nano, nano optical solutions. And so what you see here is the highest resolution PL uh, available on the market. And this allows us to get the most detailed information from a micro LED. Um, and we can scan over a micro LED either in PL uh, or in EL mode. And we get the highest resolution optical emission. And this tells us how the chip is behaving. Uh, one of the core measurements which we do for customers is a thing called EQE. Um, and this is really letting us understand how healthy is the chip. If you want to put a chip into a device, you want to know how much electricity is going in uh, and how much light is coming out. And that's the essence of what EQE does, um, as well as angular measurements. Now, where we come in is micro LEDs become, have become very, very small. They've become to the level of less than a speck of dust, you know, a single micron, a micron and a half, two microns. And this is especially for applications like augmented reality, um, where you want to have a very high resolution display, which is very close to your eye. And so you're going to have many, many of these chips turned into pixels in a display, which is right next to your eye. And so to get a very high resolution of 4K or even 8K, you're going to need millions and millions of these chips. Um, and the reason micro LED is one of the leading solutions for this technology, for augmented reality technology, is that micro LED is much, much brighter than OLED or LCD. And so if you go outside and you have the sun coming out, um, micro LED is the technology which will allow you to still see that information even in daylight. And so there's been a lot of investment in micro LED companies. Um, but micro LED itself, the manufacturing of micro LED today is a big challenge because micro LED um, manufacturing today is very um, imperfect. It's very, uh, um, the yields are very low, meaning that for when you make these wafers, large parts of them, large selections are not good. Um, and so there's a challenge on one side, how do we identify out of these million chips, which ones are good and which ones are not good. And on the other side, we wanna figure out how do we make it much, much better over time. If you look today on the market, um, if you look at an LCD, the LCDs are very cheap. Um, 
And the yields on the LCDs today are 99.99999, five times after the, after the point um, percent yield, meaning that, you know, it's, prior, it's really practically 100%. If you have 99% uh, yield on a TV, you're talking about hundreds of pixels, which are not going to be good. So uh, it has a real, uh, it's very important to get to these high yields. And today, you know, the numbers on micro, nobody's coming right out and it depends on the technology, but I think we can safely say that micro LED yields are well below 50%. And so that's a big challenge in terms of making this, the devices like micro LED um, consumer, uh, available to the, to the wide consumer public. And that affects the price of the micro LED, right? When uh, when you don't have a very high yield, and if you have to inspect every single one to make sure you're shipping good good ones. Uh, yeah. But uh, do you uh, is your technology enabling a fast inspection? Our our technology is enabling first and foremost a a, a much more accurate inspection than what's available today in the market, meaning we're able to see a wide variety of defects, um, which which cannot be seen with standard technology. Um, and then secondly, and, and that's been our main focus until now, has been automating that. Uh, we just completed a raise, uh, we just announced it this week. And one of the main focuses of this raise is to allow us to work on our high throughput technologies, both in terms of rapid EL, electroluminescence, um, rapid PL, and just in generally making the, pro the whole process seamlessly fast. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was muting myself. Uh, so, no so when when uh, 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 there there are like several uh, uh, disruptions that are going to happen that are happening right now with micro LED, and one of them is uh, heads up displays, uh, augmented reality, of VR glasses, stuff right. like that. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be huge, and I guess uh, this they're, they're they're getting to insane pixel density, Correct. very good brightness, so they work outdoors. And uh, you are totally partnering with all these companies who are shipping right. those? So, so you know, obviously, I have to be a little careful about who we're working with. I can say we're working with uh, the best companies in the field. And anyone we're not working with yet, we, <laughs> we're not saying you're not the best. But uh, we're working with many of the, of the best companies in the field. Um, I think, you know, uh, Charbucks, you, you, you correctly pointed on that, that there's a lot of um, different, there's a convergence of different technologies uh, happening today. Um, you know, just to take it as a brief example, the COVID, you know, all our, anybody who had children was home and, you know, thank God for Zoom. I don't, if we didn't have Zoom, we wouldn't have survived this. Uh, but even then it was still very, very complicated. Um, to, as a way to educate. Um, and augmented reality opens up a lot of new channels. And if you look at every big company and a lot of small companies, there's, there's a huge uh, investment in augmented reality, um, whether it's Apple, who are one of the first companies to buy a micro LED company. Uh, Facebook made a large investment in Plessy, which is a UK-based uh, micro LED company. Google just announced a few weeks ago that they that they're planning on uh, purchasing Raxium, I believe, for a billion dollars. Um, and so these are all uh, this shows you that the market and and really all I, I believe that the main technology driving pushing these companies towards that investment is augmented reality. And if MicroLED is successful, that that's the push, you know, for these companies to make such a large investment. Um, in this area, I think they, they need something which is say, okay, what is going to let us do something which nobody else has done until now? It's to make a slightly better TV. I don't think there'd be enough um, push, even though there's a lot of advantages to micro LED in TVs as well. But I, I'm confident that if micro LED is successful in terms of its application, its terms of its implementation to AR, then you will see it funnel down into all the other applications. I would say today the two major applications um, which are going to drive micro LED technology, um, in my opinion, AR is the is the big uh, payday because you know whoever gets there first um, and successfully uh, is going to you know have 
it, they, they, everybody sees this as a very important market and whoever gets there first, this is going to allow them to dominate that market, hopefully. Um, the other area where we're seeing a lot of interest in micro letter car displays. Uh, for a wide variety of, you know, whether it's it's their temperature stability, uh, which makes them much better than OLED uh, for the, you know, in, in a car, you don't necessarily need the highest resolution, um, but you need something which can be very bright and very st stable, even in high temperatures. Um, and micro LED is a very good candidate for that. So those are on the lower res side, we're seeing uh, car displays. On the higher res side, and you know, very high resolution side, like you mentioned, we're seeing augmented reality uh, pushing it very strongly. Sorry, I think you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I keep muting myself. Uh, one one um, uh, market that I'm excited about, and I hope kind of it can work in, is something like this, where you would have a Pico projector using micro LED uh, from the phone, you know, like or something that's small, like very pocketable. Because there are these amazing uh, DLP Pico projectors, and you know there there are some uh, there is some technology out there, but uh, it would be nice to have higher resolution, brighter, smaller. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the power consumption, but uh, and and somehow make it fit smaller, and maybe they're also targeting that. It could be, you know, also great contrast just to add to your list. I think in terms, I, I think you're 100, you know, I think it's going to open up a wide variety of uh, opportunities. Um, you know, also rollable displays, which have not really taken off with OLED. I think they're going to have a, a wide, um, you know, with OLED you have, because it's an organic material and you need to have encapsulation, um, that creates a variety of challenges uh, and micro LED could be better for that. Um, but I think, uh, I think everybody is kind of competing towards this next iPhone or next phone, uh, smartphone thing, which, which everybody's identified now as the augmented reality. Um, and I think that's, that's being a major drive, but again, once, once that's working and once the pricing has come to a point where people can afford it, I think you'll see, you know, uh, a, a real strong prol proliferation into the market. And, you know, just one thing to highlight about televisions is that, you know, one of the, you, so you mentioned about power consumption. So, you know, power consumption on a TV is not a big issue. Um, but one of the promises of micro LED is that as the chips become smaller, you'll still, they'll still be very bright. And so that's why one of the core element, one of the core measurements uh, which people are trying to do a thing called external quantum efficiency, which again is how much current I put into the device and how much light comes out. And you want that to be very high and consistent. You know, the promise should be that the EQE is around 80%. Today, it's still around 20 or 30% in a lot of devices. Um, and so that's something where, um, you know, and, and so for a TV that might be less important um, for augment, for, for, Portable devices for, uh, you know, battery-powered device that's very important, like augmented reality. Um, and so these are things which still need to be worked. But even on a television, if you have a device and you don't mind putting a lot of power into it, you're still going to get a lot of heating. And so, that you know, all these issues have to be resolved in order to have an effective device. The one thing I want to say about the television, I think this is a very um, cool and exciting element of microLED is that micro LED, um, if, if, when it's realized properly, uh, even a small micro LED will have a, uh, a lot of power, a lot of brightness, and it will allow you to have a, uh, a standard pixel size on a television. And so what that means is that you can have basically a, a standard array for a television. And if you wanna go from 42 inch to 55 inch, you're just going to add, com add uh, blocks around it. And that's a big uh, cost saver for the manufacturers where today, you know, for every different pixel size, you need to have a different, you know, a whole different uh, um, protocol for setting up the TV. So, th so th that's another area where we, I don't think it's enough to drive the whole market. I don't think that's why these companies are making such a big investment, but I definitely think it's something which is going to, um, uh, have an effect once micro LED is uh, commercially available. Is it uh, correct uh, that there, 
uh, as I understand, there's two different uh, uh, types of micro LED. There's like a, one that kind of looks like it's uh, uh, on the wafer, like a fab uh, style, which what it looks like here, and some other style is more like a mass transfer. Are you compatible with uh, with both of these styles, or there's even other ways to make them? So, so essentially, if you look at the, um, uh, you know, if you look at the process, you know, you start with a wafer, which is a epitaxial wafer, a semiconductor wafer, and then you're going to do some etching. Um, and so you're going to do, you know, from our perspective, you do inspection before the etching and after the etching. And after the etching, you have all these devices. Um, then comes the issue of mass transfer. It's not a separate micro LED, but basically at that, at that point, you take the wafer and you say, okay, now how do we get these devices um, into a display? And that's why, you know, you're probably not going to see micro LED televisions at an affordable price for a long time, because currently the amount, the cost it takes and the time it takes to transfer millions of devices into a television um, is going to, is, is not going to make it um, cost effective. So there's a lot of work being um, invested into how do we do a mass transfer of these chips from the wafer into the device. Um, that's probably why in the early stages, we're going to see smaller displays, maybe very high density displays, but smaller displays um, where the cost benefit is still, uh, is still, is still realistic. Uh, and uh, when, when I look here uh, on your video, uh, so it looks like uh, you, you're talking about 12 inch wafer and so, so the, the end of, yeah i'm sorry go ahead yeah so um and uh, you, your customers would buy a bunch of these machines and have a, a bunch of people in a row like analyzing a bunch of displays at the same time or so so first first of all i think it's important to you know we're working with a few with a few customers already on the 12 inch model uh but i think most of the industry today is around the eight inch uh, level, even maybe six inch, depending on um, the technology. There's a good push to move things towards 12 inch because that's where the semiconductor world lives. And then when the technology reaches there, there's a lot of tools available uh, that, you know, which have been already uh, designed for the semiconductor world, as well as a uh, reduction in cost um, because you're getting much more devices uh, out of each process. Um, so essentially the, where we are today is we're working more with quality control. And so the tools which you're seeing over here, these are sitting in the labs, they're looking at high-end prototypes. Um, the, a, a lot of our focus right now is to make these tools into, um, into tools which will sit in the manufacturing uh, plants. We're working on two, um, two separate directions. One is, uh, um, a, a, pro, a portfolio of uh, inspection tools, including a rapid EL um, technology, uh, and that and that will be inspection. Inspection meaning good or not good. Is you know is this device uh, appropriate for putting into a display or not? Um, and a second set of tools, which uh, which are more designed towards defect review, which is okay. We've identified all the chips which are bad. How do we learn from that process to improve the process which took us until this point so that the the overall yield of the of the of the wafers are not 50 percent but they're in the 90 percent and that's you know so those are two separate directions um which we believe are important areas for the industry when i look at your video here uh so you you were mentioning for example that you have uh this the smallest light in the world the smallest point of light in the world the smallest light source um it, this what we're showing now is actually not that but you'll see that in a few in a few seconds our expertise really is in the area of nano optics um and this was actually discovered uh, by my father professor aaron lewis um in the 80s when he was in cornell uh and at Cornell University. And what he showed over there is that light can go smaller than the diffraction limit um, when you confine light to a very small aperture. And that, that's what we're seeing over here. Um, these are these nano optical probes, which we designed. 
um, and they can both collect light from a very small, from a very high resolution, a very small aperture, um, or they can inject light in a very controlled fashion. Um, and what this allows us to do is see in a very uh, precise and accurate way how not only is the is the device emitting light, but how is it emitting light? What is the distribution of light on that device? And that's something um, uh, which we can show um, uh, in a very um, in a very uh, accurate fashion. So you know, if you don't mind, I'll I'll um, I'll try and share um, I'll try and share my screen over here for a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, just uh, one, one thing. When I see the video here, it looks like there's two golden blocks next to the yeah. pixel. What are, exactly. is that? What is that? So that that's in every 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 uh, perth, every every team designed it a little bit differently. Um, but essentially, the way uh, these chips are designed on the wafer is that they have electrical contacts. You know, for convenience, we're showing them right next to the chip. Sometimes that's the design. Sometimes you'll see, you know, um, you know, the ground is like a common ground, uh, but essentially, um, people are very interested in seeing the electrical excitation of these chips um, because in a phone, that's the way they're going to be excited. So you have photoluminescence where we excite it optically, and then the chip emits light optically, um, or we have EL, electroluminescence, where we excite it electrically and it emits optically. Um, the, the difference between PL and EL in terms of accuracy of, of identifying defects can be anywhere between 30 and 40%. So it's considerable. Um, PL, though, is much faster because there's no contact. EL is a slower process because you're going point by point and you're touching each one um, and you're turning them on. So it's a much more accurate way of testing the devices, but it's unrealistic because of the scale uh, of the wafers and micro LED. So one of the one of the areas we're putting a lot of uh, effort and focus on um, is a rapid EL technology, which will allow us to do a full wafer test every point, um, around four million points in about uh, somewhere between uh, half an hour to an hour, and so that's uh, which which today would take five to six months uh if you did every point at you know two seconds um so we are you know wrap so that's something we're putting a lot of uh investment in right now uh, and uh, do you have a presentation maybe you can talk about some some slides to explain uh, your technology yeah sure i think uh, i think one of the things um here so let me let me let me share um let me share uh a slide, you know, one of the things which which we can do here um, is we can use that nano optical probe and we can scan over uh, the device and get a lot of information. So what we're seeing over here is a combination of structural information and optical information. And then we see a combination of that um, together. So at each point, we're getting both the height and the how much light is coming out from the device. Um, so one of the core areas of defects in micro LEDs are what's called sidewall defects. And these are defects which occur uh, from the side of the, of the device. And so we're able to see not only how rough the surface is or if there are any actual structural defects, but actually how much light is coming out in a controlled fashion. Um, and if I go to the next slide over here, um, you can see here we're looking at an area um, and we can see how the light varies at different parts in a trench. And we're seeing here um, with what's called sub diffraction resolution or super resolution, resolution which you can't even get with an optical microscope, how the light is behaving. And so why is this important? Um, we are we are looking to understand in our process here um, when a device is behaving not optimally, um, why is it not behaving optimally? And so one of the things we do is we look for how, where is the light coming out? And if the light is or isn't coming out from a specific area, 
we try and understand what is wrong in the process over there. This could be something structural. Uh, we could find thermal defects, which are beneath the surface. Um, we can look at changes in material. Um, most of these wafers are what's called uh, gallium nitride wafers, which are three, five semiconductor materials, um, which lead to light emission. And essentially um, they're, they're grown under great uh, temperature, but small variations in the temperature can create changes in wavelength. That's very important to know about displays. Um, what the color is, you know, within two nanometer shifts, uh, the color changes in color are not acceptable um, for high end displays. Um, and so these are things which we work together with the manufacturers to give them a filtration process going from the full wafer down to the individual chips to identify where are the problems. And once we've identified where the problems are, to give them a better understanding of where these problems may, may, may be coming from. So they can improve the process and, and get better and better. Uh, so you are involved in uh, kind of like the R&D phase right now for the manufacturing of these amazing dis displays, but you are totally planning how to be uh, very relevant and uh, useful in all the mass production. So, yeah, so. I mean, I think I think it's also accurate to say that the industry itself is kind of in the R&D phase at this point. You know, there's still um, the micro LED industry is still. Um, you know, it, it, there was a challenge, I would say, until 2016, 2017. Does micro LED really work? Does it exist? Um, is this a viable technology? Now, everybody agrees it's a viable technology. The question is, how do you make it uh, reproducible? Um, uh, uh, um, how do you make it uh, um, cost effective and how do you make it uh, in, in a consistent fashion? So it doesn't have to, you know, so you get a wide, um, a wide array of, of devices which, which perform according to spec. And so uh, right now, our, you know, in our first two or three years, we interacted uh, first, you know, purely R&D. We added automation this year uh, to, our core, to our core systems. Um, and we started working with some big companies on prototyping as well as uh, quality control. Um, but our next stage is to get to full inspection in, in, in the manufacturing. Sorry, you're muted again. I'm so sorry. I need to stop muting myself. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm not trying to get any secret information from you, but Please. I can imagine that some of these displays are just insanely awesome and very, very like futuristic and uh, like <laughs> mind blowing in terms of what they, if this becomes like the next iPhone, let's say, if this becomes something that everybody's gonna get, how it's gonna change people's lives is very interesting to try to understand. Uh, so it's a really awesome field to work in, right? It's, it's a wonderful field to work in and, and you know, we're very lucky to be working with industry leaders. Um, we are working with them a little bit earlier than the stage uh, of the final screen. We're looking more at the uh, pre you know, pre-transfer into the screen. Um, but we, we do get to see some very cool stuff. So, you know, we're very lucky. Um, and of course, we're very uh, discreet about what we see and don't see. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. So this is this is awesome, and hopefully, um, I mean, it's been talked about for a while. And uh, I wonder how many micro LED displays are shipped yet in in the actual products, or if everything is. Uh, I, I, I think you're going to start to see. You know, we're already seeing a few prototypes. Um, and I don't think the big challenge is the prototypes because, you know, anybody, you know, Samsung released a television uh, a year ago uh, at CES, and I forget the exact price, but I think it was $130,000, um, maybe for an 80 inch or a 90 or 100 inch uh, television. So, you know, the prototypes are very important and very, uh, and very critical to the, you know, to showing the, uh, re to showing the capabilities of the technology, to show the maturity of the technology. Um, but then the next stage is to work on the process and bring the process down to a point where everybody can afford it. Um, and we, you know, we even see this today. If you, if you compare LCD to OLED, again, the LCD has extremely, extremely high yields. 
and all that has good yields, you know, they're, I, I don't know, you know, it depends on the application, the technology, but, you know, let's say they're in the high 90s or mid 90s and you still see there's quite a big um, price difference between LCD and OLED even till today. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a iterative process. And um, I think when you, I think you have here the combination of a really exciting new technology, which is driving it forward. Um, you have a really premium technology, which, uh, which has, a, which has stood up to the promises, which it, which it is, uh, which, which people made about it, meaning, you know, very high brightness, very high resolution, uh, great angular, um, distribution. Um, and so th there's a lot of push there, but we need to get to some fundamental, um, uh, blocks right now. You know, you mentioned mass transfer, um, inspection, uh, inspection, and quality assurance is going to be very, very important from a price perspective, and that that's where we're looking to really uh, make a difference. I think you know one of the areas. So you know, one area I said we're spending a lot of time and effort on is what's called EQE, external quantum efficiency, um, and I think today we offer the best, if not the uh, one, if not the premium um, solution for, uh, I shared the whole screen, I think, right? But it's fine. Um, yeah. uh, the best, if not the, <laughs> I don't want to say the only solution, but probably one of the only solutions um, for EQE on an on a automated mass scale. Um, the other area which we're seeing a lot of interest, you know, EQE tells you how many photons are coming out. But in a display, we don't just care about how many photons are coming out. We care where they're going. Um, so if they're going, you know, 50% of them are going to the side, that's not going to be great. That's going to cause you a lot of interference with other, with other chips. Um, so one of the things which people are very interested in is um, the angular distribution. And this becomes very, very difficult, just like EQE, to do on devices below 10 microns or, you know, 20, even 20 microns. Um, and so this is where we come in with the ability to both um, have very, very, very accurate angular distribution, seeing how the light emits from a device on one hand. Um, and on the other hand, uh, we show here uh, the ability to um, see how the the beam shapes coming from a device. And what this allows us to do is as we start to go farther and farther away from a device, we see what is the beam, what is the what is the optical properties coming out of the device itself. Um, and so these are all very important areas right now for quality control. As we move to inspection, um, where the focus is going to be, is it a good or bad pixel, a uh, good or bad chip, then a lot of our, you know, we're going to have to focus much more on throughput um, and maybe not on every every specific feature. So one, we're putting a lot of um, uh, uh, investment within the company also to develop algorithms and filters so we can identify areas which need to be inspected at very high resolution, but ignore areas which seem to be which seem to be going okay. And so um, a lot of what we're trying to do is a um, uh, totally encompassing process of quickly identifying where are the problems, um, looking at them, identifying what they are, and then moving on to the next one. So, so these are these are some of the paths we're working on right now. Uh, one thing I can uh, wonder is, um, like sometimes when uh, you for, let's say you buy a MacBook. You have uh, one that seems to have a chip that has uh, one of these yields that where they don't activate all the cores. Uh, is uh -huh. that some kind of way where you get a display that might be a cheaper one, but that's not perfect and that's still okay? So, so what? What you know? I, I don't think Apple's the right example for this, but um, you know, within these devices, th there'll be a process which is called binning, um, and so you know, you're going to look at. Um, you know, you want the blue all to be, let's say, you know, within two nanometers of what we've defined blue to be for this display. Um, if we see a variation of over two nanometers, um, what what man, what um, different people in the process can do is what's called binning. They can say, okay, you know, we're going to take all the 
uh, ones below 488 and we're going to 488 nanometers and we're going to put them in a different pile and we'll sell them to the B players, you know, or for instance, um, uh, you know, if we see that an area has a lower EQE, then we'll put all those chips um, in one area together. So we don't need to have um, different uh, voltage, excita different excitations, um, different uh, power controls at different parts of the display. Um, so there are all kinds of, you know, it's not just a, you know, there, there's a lot of room in the middle, go, no, go. It's a big industry um, and there are many players here. And so, you know, you start to see these, uh, these filtrations to different players of different qualities of displays. And I, I think, I think that's going to have to happen in micro led just to keep the pricing, you know, to make, to, to get as much bang for your buck, so to speak. Uh, is there a risk that if you have a dead pixel or something in the middle of the display, it's not very nice or is there some kind of way to, because the uh, resolution is so high on some of these crazy little micro LED displays. Is it possible yeah. the pixel density, is it possible to just deactivate a bunch of pixels and it doesn't, you can't see it? No, I would say, you know, if, if, if that, that's the worst case scenario, if you've actually have a display and there's like a, you know, more than if there's like a dead pixel in the middle of the display, that display is probably not going to pass quality control. Um, you know, if, if the, our goal is to catch these defects before they actually get to that final display, um, and, and, and to avoid that problem. And I think that's really where the power is The earlier, you know, our power is that we're able to see defects, which other people cannot see, and we can see them early on. And the earlier on we catch them, uh, the more money that, tr that saves for the manufacturers. And so you're saying that it's possible that, um, uh, some of the, the intensity of the light or the direction of the light might differ slightly. Uh, and that, so it's like, is the, the yield or the quality getting better and better? So they could make billions of these little chips and somehow they're all exactly the same or right now there's a, a lot of variability. That is the goal. But right now there's a lot of variability. Um, that, that is the goal though. The goal is to get it as consistent as possible. Um, you know, as consistent as repeatable as possible. Um, and like any process, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stages, um, in this and it's, it's a complicated, um, you know, you're going from wafer design, uh, color control, um, lithography are very small devices. So you have many processes here, which all need to be optimized, but eventually they will be. And eventually you'll see this, you know, I believe in the next, you know, several years. And, uh, your devices, uh, are, ha are meant to be, uh, manually, uh, operated. Is there some kind of way to automate this with like computer vision and something? No, so right now, you know, most of our devices are actually automated in terms of, you know, you, you load up the wafer design, you say, you know, where it, it identifies where the different uh, uh, chips are um, and it goes from one to the other, you know, with pattern recognition. Also, it's able to adjust the angle to make sure it's accurate. Um, so that that already exists, you know, as we move to the next levels, though, um, we're going to be looking to add more and more AI and big data to identify uh, patterns which le which are coming from defects, you know, optical patterns. Um, and basically the idea is that every time we see a defect, we want to feed it into the library um, and create a very large database of these defects so we can identify them earlier and earlier on in the process, also from our process. So we won't need to actually come in with the nano probe, for instance, and look at it at that point. But So, so when, I, when I look at your, your device uh, here in the video, it looks like... Uh, there is at the top you have to put your eyes in there there's a person putting like looking through the the like the the system right um it's it's really more for uh convenience um everything is in a you know if, if you if you see one of the videos before um you know everything is, is shown in the ccd everything is done through the computer uh once the wafer is put on um yeah if you, if you go to where the eqe is um yeah, keep. Going. Yeah, I think I think it's right over there. You'll see you'll see a video in a second. Um, so so what can you do in terms of the uh, so, the AI and making this even more? 
automated you know, faster? So I, I think I'm going to give an example from the semiconductor industry, and I think this is um, this is relevant uh, for what we're talking about as well. You know, in the in 1985, the first semiconductor chip went below a micron. Um, and until there, everybody was using standard, standard optical inspection. And after that point, uh, they started moving more and more to what's called e-beam inspection, and the, which is a very high resolution um, electron microscope to inspect defects. The display industry today is at that inflection point. It's going below, you know, it's, it's, it's going into defects below a micron. Um, and that's, you know, that's why you need a very high resolution optical technique, which is what we're providing. Um, if you look today at the um, at that same industry, you know, if you look at a company like Applied Materials, who makes uh, the e-beam tools, they have an optical inspection because that's much faster, and then they have an e-beam inspection, which is much higher resolution. And so we're trying to do a similar direction where we do optical inspection, um, like PL, to identify patterns and then identify the defect and create an, a library which tells us this pattern is this kind of defect this pattern is is is, is not a defect it's just a you know some kind of uh, reflection so these are things where the higher the more statistics we get the better library it, it is the more we're gonna the faster the process is going to be the more efficient the process is going to be all right and uh when i go to your uh, website right here. Maybe you can uh, you can talk a little bit about uh, the company. Uh, how many people are sure. you, and where are you based? We're going to be twenty people by the end of the year. Uh, we're based in Jerusalem, uh, and uh, we're sitting in the technological park over here, which you know we're next to Intel, Mobileye, um, Teva. Uh, so we're you know we're we're in great com we're in great company. Uh, we're very lucky to have the uh, former uh, president of Tower Semiconductors join our board. And we're very excited about that. We also have um, uh, Dr. Alan Harris as a senior advisor. He ran a company called Kativa uh, for many years, which is a leading uh, OLED um, uh, inkjet printing uh, company. Uh, so we have some really great, great advisors here in the company, uh, great people on the board. Uh, my father, Professor Aaron Lewis, is the pioneer of super resolution microscopy. Uh, he's the he's really the inventor of super resolution, um, and he's a senior. He's the chief scientist in the company, and he gives uh, he's working with us on a lot of the core projects as well. And what did uh, Eric Betzig uh, get the Nobel Prize for? Eric Betzig got a Nobel Prize for super resolution. Um, yeah, Eric Betzig shared the Nobel Prize with two other people who showed uh, very important applications of super resolution uh, as a field. Um, so he won it, if I'm not mistaken, for an area called POM, uh, which is a microscopy area um, of, of identifying um, molecules, uh, of sing single molecules. He also used the technology uh, which which my father developed uh, together with Eric, uh, when Eric Betzig was in his lab to show single molecule fluorescence in his work in Bell Labs. Um, but he won his Nobel Prize for his work in, in uh, super resolution microscopy, and he shared it with two other people um, whose names I don't remember right now. <laughs> and uh, if, if I click on the press, so maybe there's the announcement of uh... Uh, so you have like uh, the investment happening? Yes, uh, we just closed the investment. Uh, we just announced the investment on, on uh, Tuesday. We just closed an investment of uh, $10 million. Um, and this is led uh, by um, Blue Red Partners, which is a Singapore-based um, VC, which, is, which has a focus on bringing Israeli companies uh, into Asia, which have a large... Uh, Asian market, uh, also joined by our crowd, um, and uh, and our first investors were Maverick Ventures Israel, um, who really got us started uh, three years ago. So, uh, in the, in um, uh, Maverick and Blue Red, as well as um, the former Itzhak Adre, the former the former president of Tower, are all sitting on the board, and they've been great partners in this process. 
And here it says in a press release that uh, uh, micro LED market is going to be 21 billion by 2027. So that, that is what they predict. And I believe that I think by 2027, you'll start to see devices coming out and we expect the field to grow rapidly. All right. So it's an exciting future. Uh, yes. And to uh, to see how this is coming through and it's going to be awesome. Uh, so thanks for making these uh, amazing displays work. <laughs> you're a crucial, you're a crucial part of the technology, right? I hope so. I hope so. That's our, that's our goal. All right, cool. Oh, is there something else we forgot to mention in the video? Something? No, I, I I think you know I think it's a really exciting time, um, and it's a great uh, it's great to be in this field, and we get to work with a lot of amazing customers, uh, and we're very grateful for that. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks for doing this video. Thanks everybody for watching. Starbucks, very great speaking to you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, also very important, you'll be at the SID okay. Display Week. Yes, right? we will be at Display Week. Uh, I'm speaking there on, um, that's a good question. I think may, um, give me one second. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's in a couple of weeks. It's very I'm, soon. I'm speaking there uh, May 12th uh, at the micro LED session. I'm uh, the, the opening uh, opening lecture over there uh and we have a booth and we're going to be showing some cool stuff so if you are at display week please come over and it's going to be so uh, important such an important event after i don't know what happened the last couple of years but it was uh <laughs> it was, this, i'm sure a lot of things have happened in the last couple of years and there's going to be some amazing displays we're so excited to be back the last time uh, was 2019 last two years there was virtual um, and so it's going to be great to see um, the people, to see the the players and the customers, and you know all the people who are contributing to this amazing field. Cool. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for doing this video. Charvak, great meeting you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.